All right, guys, what's up? We got a new video, new knife I've been anticipating for a while. Just came in, so this is a first impressions video. As always, I'll do a follow-up video in a couple weeks after I get some use to give you my full review. But this is a first impressions on the Fast Master Up Fair and Forge Gent. This is one of the, this is, I believe, the third collaboration between Fair and Forge, Wee Knives, and Master Up. So you get the nice Wee Knives type case, which I love. These kind of got these fleece liners. There's two slots. You can put two knives in there. And they upgraded the, the, the uh, cloth. It's actually quite a bit nicer. Look at this. It's quite nice. It's much, uh, much nicer cloth. And it's got the Ferrum Forge Design logo on it. Pretty cool. Oh, Getting that in frame. There we go. Just need to zoom out. Titch. There we are. All right, so let's talk about the Gent, shall we? It's a small knife, that's for sure. Um, I'll move this out of the way. I like the leather background better. Like I said, this is the third collaboration. This was the less expensive, least expensive of of the three knives at $79. It is a titanium frame lock with over G10 overlays. So this is just black G10, nicely polished, um, very attractive G10, and over the frame of the knife. Um, so a lot of people would call this a liner lock. It's really not, it's still a frame lock. Um, has a simple construction, one standoff, titanium stonewash scales, Get your S35 VN blade on the flipper on bearings. It's very smooth. And that out of the box drops free. So first impressions are pretty good. Um, I like it. It's small, but not too small. They did a good job. For some reason, the Falcon never really spoke to me. I'm going to compare it to the Crux here because... Let's flip them. The blade shape on these is pretty much identical. Actually, it is identical. Um, this is honestly a smaller version of the Crux. The Crux is full titanium, though this has the uh, thicker titanium scales. This has the titanium with the G10 overlay. So, meant to be a smaller knife, hence the name Gent for gentleman's folder. So, that's a size comparison next to the Crux. The one I think it's most similar to is the Boots Blades Arrow. Um, they are almost identical in size. If you look, they're pretty much. The same so they're both pretty small knives but they're very usable still have enough handle um, the grail of small knives the small subenza as for a size comparison so again right there in the same um, area as the small subenza but a flipper and then the little native which is smaller so here's some there's some size comparisons for you so uh, first impressions are good has good ergonomics. Um, I'm sure you want to see the grip. There it is in a standard grip, which I like to reverse my hand this way so you can see how much handle I have. I have medium sized hands, I wear a medium glove, and I can get all four fingers on there, even with that flipper tab. The one thing I had with the Falcon, and I think the flipper, it almost it made me just choke back more and it just felt kind of cramped because of the way the handle design was. This has kind of got a, br a straight design on the handle. So it doesn't force your hand anywhere. So you have better ergonomics that way, I think. So it fits the hand well. You also have this forward choil, which I absolutely love. Some people aren't don't love choils, but when you want to do that fine detail work and stuff, you can put your thumb up here, put your finger in that choil, and you got a full grip. You feel very much in control of the knife. It's not necessary to use the knife. You don't have to have the choil. It's there, um, but I like it. I like that it's there. I like the option. So the action is very smooth, it is on bearings. I will probably roll in some footage in this video, or maybe do just do a separate video of disassembly of this knife, because I had to disassemble it already. Um, with the same thing out with the Crux, is I got it, and they don't lock tight the pivots, I don't think, at all. And I don't mind that, but a little bit of Loctite would be nice, because they've all come loose on me, and had to be Loctited so they didn't uh, have blade play and get off center. So I, I got this and I was flipping it and just playing around with it, fidgeting with it like I usually do. And it came loose and I had to, I had to put some Loctite on it yesterday. So I'll have a video up of the, that disassembly so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like inside. Uh, it's a very sleek folder. It's very slim. It's not going to take up very much room in the pocket. Speaking of the pocket, the clip is a deep carry clip. I'm not sure how I feel about the clip. It's kind of strange. I don't know how to explain it really. It's, it's kind of um, an afterthought. 
it feels like and the design. And my camera's gonna die, so I gotta plug it in real quick. Before it does that. The battery sometimes man it has like has like 20% and all of a sudden it goes boop down to zero. I like to keep the charger and everything right here, so sorry if I shake the camera when I plug this in. Alright, there we go. Crisis averted. So, um, the clip is weird. I mean, it's deep carry, it's it's small, but it's kind of cheap looking in it. I mean, the knife is not expensive, it's 79 bucks. You get really good materials and fit and finish and everything, but the clip just feels like an afterthought on this one. Um, I mean, obviously the Booze Blades Arrow is going to have it's a full titanium milled clip. It's going to be this more expensive knife. But even like the Spyderco here with the wire clip, same kind of idea, but for some reason that just doesn't look cheap to me. The, the, it just, just kind of looks out of place on the knife. It's just a design thing that I'm not sure of um, on that. I mean, like the the Gent, not the Gent, the Crux and the um, Falcon used a similar style clip to this. Now you couldn't, be harder to do that with this because of the G10, but it's still possible. And it, these had more pay, uh, attention to the clip, but they were also more expensive knives. So that might be why. It might have been a heap cost down. Uh, so that's kind of strange. Um, Here's the knife in a reverse grip. So it fits nice and good. It's really comfortable, fits good in your hammer style grip. So any way you kind of hold it, it's comfortable. There's no hot spots. Um, once I get using the knife more, once I do some cut tests and stuff, I'll you know, get a better idea for that. But overall, I just want to do a first impressions of the Gent. Um, I'll probably will roll in that footage of it disassembled. We'll just have that in one video. I like it. I think it's a good, um, a freaking incredible value for 79 bucks. I mean, you know, titanium S35 on very smooth action on bearings. It's a nice G10 and it only costs $80. It's pretty remarkable what they're able to do with this master up, uh, fair and forge we knife um, collaboration. I'm excited to see what knives they come out with in 2018, but let's go ahead and do a couple measurements too while we're doing that. Then we'll wrap it up. Your handle thickness is, it's pretty slim. Yeah, it's just barely over four inches. 0.4 inches. <laughs> four inches. Um, so it's under a half an inch. 0. 0. 0.41 0. inches thick. Um, your blade stock is 0. 0.0930, so under an inch. And let's see how thin it is behind the edge. negative. Jeez, these things. They're going crazy on me lately. It's time for some new calipers, I believe. Wow. 0 0.0225. That is thin. 0 0.0225. That is a very, very thinly ground blade. So that is going to be an excellent slicer. Oh yeah, I can feel that. Out of the box sharpness is good. Do I have... Just got a posting out here. Pretty dang sharp. Could probably be touched up a little bit, but definitely sharp enough, I think, out of the box. So that's that's a thin, thinly ground knife. Then that's that's going to be a great slicer, good food prep knife, good overall EDC use on that one. So yeah. Uh, pretty, really, really good first impressions, guys. Um, I'll do a full review. Like I said, it's going to be a little while. I've got a few nights ahead of this one, and but I wanted to get a first impressions video up and kind of let you know what I thought about it. Hopefully they do another run of these, because right now they're not. But they do have another run up in the Falcon right now that are custom anodized, and they may do the same thing with the Crux. Is that what I heard? Is that they're going to do like some offer these in an anodization? So I know a lot of, <laughs> I've had like five or six people comment, some of your crux, some of your crux, and I really like this knife, so I'm not going to, but um, I hope that they, they do the same with this. Maybe they could do like a carbon fiber overlay with a blue anodization, or just anodize the frame and keep the carbon the G10, or do some different colors G10, or lots of options, lots of lots of um, possibilities, but it's a fantastic design. Um, I like smaller knives, you guys know that. Um, great, just for EDC. You know, this is designed as a gentleman's folder and it does great for that um the clip not as much for the gentleman's folder if you took the clip off and put it in a slip or something it'd be great um i will say too there is no way to like slowly open the knife i mean you're flipping it and a lot of times gentleman's folders are going to be more like the 
you know, slower opening method of the Sabenza, um, or like the thumb hole on the Gent, or not the Gent, the uh, Mini Arrow. You can open it slowly with that, as well as just the flipper. But just, you know, it is what it is. Not a big deal. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. All right, I figured why I had to have this knife apart to fix the blade play. Might as well show you. So you have to take apart the left side of the knife, take off the inlay, which is G10, and these two screws, which are T6, and then you get to this odd looking pivot. And yes, that is a Phillips style. Oh, come on, not even that screwdriver. So you gotta find a pretty small Phillips here to make this work. Of course, I don't know what I do with my little toolkit. Naturally. And this is too big of a screwdriver. Let's try this little Swiss Army knife. Oh man. We got we in business. So, might as well take this apart since we have to to fix the blade play. I had to do the same thing on my Firm Forge Master Up Crux. Right out of the box, it flipped really good, but it's like they don't lock tight the pivots. So, you may have play, and then... It's interesting they put the main pivot on the frame lock side. Well, at least you get a look inside, right? So a pretty simple design. You got your stop pin there, your pivot, your bearings, which are just, oh, they look to be ceramic. Nice. Um, just kind of a rough finish, stonewashed titanium slab there with one standoff, so pretty basic construction. Don't really need to oil it. It's got a pretty good amount of oil on it already. It's very smooth, like I said. It's just had some play. So, there you go. Quick inside look of the Ferrum Porsche Gent. Pretty easy to put together, to take apart. Stop pin goes there. That's one of the handle, that's one of the screws for the over the um, G10 overlay, I guess we'll call it. Okay, and then your pivot. It's just so weird they went with this um, Phillips style pivot. I mean, why? Why not do a T8? Totally weird. So when you're taking your knife apart, you gotta have a separate. And I almost forgot a Loctite. I really need some more new Loctite. This is about out. But last time I Loctited, um, using my DLT trading cloth. Last time I Loctited the. Uh, Crux, it has never had problems since then, so. This stuff's messy and it's almost out, so I need to buy some new stuff. One of my viewers pointed me to some new Loctite. Wow. Yeah, see, this is awkward with this pivot. I mean, I just used what I had on hand, which this, for my armor knife's working just fine, but it's kind of strange. And there kicks on the furnace, guys. So next, we just got to check the centering. We're good. I'm gonna put this G10 overlay back on with these two screws. This, the smaller screws are for the pocket clip. So you do have to take that the pocket clip. So if they're gonna do this overlay, why not do it on the side? There's some I'm sure engineering reason behind it. So. But I wonder why they do it on the side that the pot clip is not on. I guess if you're a lefty, then you're good. For us righties, you gotta take off the pocket clip and the overlay just to get to the pivot. Which, I mean, it's easy, but it seems kind of extra steps. What the heck is that all about? Okay, don't tighten the uh, overlay too much or it jacks with the centering. See that? 
Those might be the wrong screws, actually. Those are for the pocket clip. Okay, so the longer ones are for the pocket clip. The shorter ones are for the overlay. So how we do this so you guys know when you get yours. Shorter ones go in the overlay. That was interesting. So you'll know if you put them in wrong because it'll move the entire knife, <laughs> the blade. So you want these short ones. But everything else is pretty standard. You got T6 um, handle screws and uh, overlay screws and body and pocket clip screws. So you actually really don't even need a T8. You really need a hex, not a hex, um, Phillips driver and the T6 Torx driver. Uh, the pocket clip is interesting. I, I'll wait for my review. Well, this is probably going to be in my review since I had to take it apart. I usually try to include them so you know how to disassemble the knives. Pocket clip seems, I mean, it works. It's a good deep carry clip, but it's kind of cheap. I mean, this is a pretty inexpensive knife. I think it was mm, $89, maybe, maybe less. It's pretty dang good for S35 titanium flipper on bearings. Got a nice flipping action. All right. And we're going to let that Loctite set for a little bit and should fix it.